You know, installing a distributor requires just a little bit more effort than stabbing it in and setting the timing. This is especially true on a Chevy small block where the mounting pad is part of the intake manifold. Because of this, the distributor's installed height depends upon the location of the mounting boss on the intake manifold. If the distance from here to the cam gear doesn't match the length of the distributor shaft, you can have premature wear problems. On stock motors, getting the proper distributor depth automatically usually isn't an issue. But on your engine, the more modifications you make may mean that you'll be more likely to have a problem. One of the usual culprits is angle milling the cylinder heads, which is a common trick to get more air through Chevy 23 degree cylinder heads. But other things can cause this problem as well, and no matter what, you should always check for good distributor gear mesh on every engine build. Just like the ring and pinion gears in the rear end, the timing gears on both the camshaft and the distributor need a little backlash. The distributor has to fit well with both the gear on the end of the camshaft as well as the oil pump drive shaft. When it does, the distributor gear will show a nice wear pattern over time right in the center of the gear as you can see here. One of the easiest ways to make sure the distributor gear isn't bottoming out against the cam timing gear is to install the distributor and make sure you still have a little bit of play. Go ahead and pop the top off so you can get to the rotor and then remove the rotor too. What you want is to be able to get your hands on the plate that connects directly to the distributor shaft. This Mallory distributor I'm using is a high performance HEI unit that has the advanced locked out. But if your distributor has advanced weights installed, you may want to remove them as well if they will prevent you from getting to the plate. What you're checking for is to make sure there's some play in the distributor gear. If it bottoms out against the cam gear or the oil pump drive shaft, it will bind the entire distributor and you'll be able to feel it in the top plate. To begin, install the distributor without a gasket. Make sure the bottom of the gear is engaged with the oil pump drive shaft and that the housing is seated against the distributor boss on the intake manifold. Then use one hand to hold the distributor firmly against the intake and with the other, pull up on the top plate to see if there is any up and down movement of the distributor shaft. If you can move it up and down a few thousandths, then you should be good to go. Now don't forget that you check this without the gasket, but that's okay. If you don't have any movement in the shaft, you'll need to raise the distributor up to get the bottom of the distributor gear off of the camshaft gear and the oil pump drive shaft. You can raise the distributor up by using these shims. These are available for most manufacturers, and you can get them when you order your distributor. Don't make a mistake of trying to stack up a bunch of different gaskets. They'll just compress over time and you'll find yourself right back where you started. The shims go on just like the gaskets. So add your space and then a gasket goes right on, on top of that. Now if you want to be even more precise, this little doodad from Goodson is a great tool and it allows you to set your distributor depth exactly where you need it. Before using the gauge, use a hex wrench to loosen the collar and slide it all the way to the top. As you can see, the bottom of the distributor depth gauge tool has a provision for engaging the oil pump drive shaft just like the distributor shaft. That way you know that both sit at the same depth. Insert the gauge just like you would a real distributor. Make sure it fully engages with the oil pump drive shaft and then slide the collar down until it rests firmly on the intake manifold's distributor bolt. Finally, tighten the set screw so the collar can't move on you. Now you can pull the device out, add this end cap, and this distance from here to here is the maximum length for your distributor. Use a large pair of calipers or a ruler and measure the distance from the top of the end cap to the bottom of the adjustable collar. Now pull the end cap off of the depth gauge, place it on the end of the distributor gear and measure that distance from the top of the end cap to the bottom of the distributor's mounting flange. As you can see on this Mallory, the distance is shorter, so I'm okay. If the distributor shaft is equal to or longer than the gauge, Add a shim or two until it is just slightly shorter. Finally, here's a tip that can improve the life of your distributor gear. This can be especially helpful if you are running a roller cam and must use a bronze distributor gear. Using a triangle file, cut a groove approximately 30 thousandths of an inch deep in the lower band of the housing. This will allow a small stream of oil to flow over the gear. It's usually easier to cut this groove on an angle so that the gears don't get in the way. As you can see, the groove doesn't have to be large at all. When you're done, just make sure to thoroughly wash everything so you don't introduce metal shavings into your new engine. Now you're at last ready to install your distributor. 
reinstall the rotor, and don't forget to put plenty of lube on the distributor gear to protect it during startup. Slide your shims in place if necessary, and this time around, don't forget the gasket. Finally, drop the cap in place and secure it, and don't forget the distributor clamp to hold everything down. You've probably already noticed that my engine is a long way from being complete, but if yours is ready, you can start running your plug wires, which, of course, is a video for another day.